Hi, boys and girls. Today's lesson is giving the gift of love. It. All right. It's November 12th, 2023. Lesson 11 of the fall quarter. And you are in Miss Kathy's class. M.O.G. and I are so glad to see you. Today, you're going to insert your prayer here. Stop the video, do your own prayer for class by yourself or with your family, and then come back. Here are the words to know. The first word is boast. To talk too much with pride or brag. The example, the sentence example is, she boasts about her musical talent whenever she has a chance. Corinth is the second one. Corinth is a city in the northeastern part of Greece, the ancient city. Paul's first letter to the church of Corinth provides us with a fuller insight into the life of an early Christian. Now, let's see, let's see. Um, so Corinth is a place, so that means that the people who were there were called Corinthians, and that's why we see letters or a book, the epistle called Corinthians, because it's to the church or the Christian people in Corinth. Persevere. Oh, one of these words is mis missing. I'm going to get it. Okay. Persevere to continue steadfastly. That means without stopping, going constantly in a task or course of action. Like you can jog steadfastly without stopping if you're in really good shape. If you're committed to something, okay? Without even though that there are obstacles and oppositions and difficulties to get through. Now the sentence says the journalist was threatened several times, but he persevered in telling the truth. Oh, that's a good way to be, isn't it? All right. The other one was patient. You know what patient means? Oh, in the Bible, it says it's the same thing. They use the old English forbearance, patience, patience. That means that you're able to, if you have patience, you're able to do what? You're able to wait. You have to have patience when you're waiting in a line and wait your turn to play a game. You have to have patience. Patience is a virtue, they say. Today's lesson, the lesson scripture is 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. The verses are 4 through 7 and then 12 through 13. The key verse is, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Remember those things about love, because if it's not one of those things, then it is not love. First Corinthians, the 13th verse, chapter rather, and the fourth verse is where our key verse comes from today. Oh, MOG is here to remind us that First Corinthians is in the New Testament. And yes, there is a second Corinthians as well. From the source is what we're going to read today. I'll go ahead and read it to save some time. We have the reader on today, but we're going to save some time. Okay. From the source, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, 4th through the 7th verses, 12 through the 13th verses. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Oh, sometimes we have to tell people, and someone says they love you, there are some things that they put into action and some things that they don't put into action. Anything that hurts or harms you is not love. And anything that dishonors you, to calls you names, um, calls you, you know, says bad words, that is not love. Anything that's looking for, or anyone who's looking for, like to raise themselves up by being around you, being your friend, 
that is not love. And love is not easily angered. It means that when somebody loves you, if you have a really good friend or someone who tells you that they're your friend, if they get angry with you all the time, you want to fuss with you all the time, or keep a record of everything they say you've done wrong, that is not a friend and that is not showing love. Maybe they don't know what it is, so you have to feel sorry for a person like that. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Now, what Paul is saying here, some people are saying that as we move along in this life, there are some things that we are never going to know until we get home, until we get home to Christ. Because, because right now, things are so, some things are so mysterious about where we're going, about our home, because we've never experienced it before. But once we get to heaven, everything will be revealed to us. And sometimes it's like slowly as you get older, things are revealed to you. You can see and understand things that you didn't understand when you were younger. And verse 13 says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now we're going to take a look at our lesson book story, our lesson book version of these scriptures. It's an epistle of Paul, remember. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. First Corinthians, the 13th chapter and the fourth verse. All of the 13th chapter is called the love verse. And you'll hear people who go to weddings, you'll hear them, them um, mention this say this a lot of times they'll use these first corinthians the 13th chapter the entire chapter in a wedding ceremony and i guess you'll be able to understand why after this giving the gift of love when paul heard about the sinful or bad things the people of corinth were doing I mean, they were in the church, you know. It was a new church, you know. Christianity was just starting, but he was telling them, hey, there is no excuse. So he wrote a letter to the church members to remind them that love was the most important gift from God. Paul wrote to them describing what love is like. Paul told the Corinthian believers that love was patient, and kind. Love was not jealous and it did not brag and it was not proud. Love was not rude or selfish and it did not get angry easily. So when someone is doing all those things and they're saying that they love you, they're your friend, whatever, and they can't do these things and you can't have those feelings for them, that is not a friend who loves you. Not at all. They probably love themselves more than anything. Love did not remember what was done wrong against them. Love was not happy with evil, but was happy with the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. Love trusts, hopes, and stays strong always. Paul continued to explain that we see things as if we are looking at them through a dark, blurry mirror. But in the future, we will be able to see everything clearly. Paul only knew a little, but in the future, Paul would know everything. Mm, So, as much as you learn now... You can only learn so much. There's only so much your whole human brain can hold. And you can be very, very smart. But you won't know everything that God has for you to know until when? Yes. Yes, until you join your ancestors 
at home with him. In closing, Paul said, there are three things that will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Questions. How does today's Bible story describe love? Can you do it? Let's see what it says. Love is patient, kind. Did you say any of these? Not jealous, does not brag. Is humble, is not rude, is unselfish, does not get angry easily, does not keep a record of wrongs, likes good, is truthful, accepts, trusts, hopes, and it stays strong. So if you said any of those, you were correct. What three, what three things will last forever? Faith, hope, and love, with love being the greatest. All right, there's an activity in the activity book. It's giving the gift of love, and it's on page 23. I like this one because it not only includes a little bit of art, but it requires a little bit more than your art. Okay. So what it's saying is in the number one heart, this one over here that's already there, we're going to write what um, love is based on in today's, from today's lesson. You may use one or more words. Draw, then we're going to draw a second heart and tell what love is not. So you can do that. I'm going to put one word over here. Love is alike. Patient. Oh, my writing comes out horrible on this thing. Love is patient. I'm going to let you put the rest of them in, okay? Now, let's see. We're supposed to draw a heart on this side. I can put like this. Love is not, uh, what was that word for braggy? Also starts with a B. B O A, that's an A, that's an O and A. S T F U L. So, but love is not boastful. Love doesn't feel bad, doesn't. So, I want you to. Finish filling those in and let's see, share with each other what your answers are. If you don't have an activity book, you can do this on a regular sheet of paper. How about that? And if you feel like it, you can take a picture of your answers and send it to me at my email address. I'd like to see your answers. Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com. I know that I say that all the time. Or you can mail it to me through the post office postcard or put it in an envelope to um miss kathy p.o box 74514 baton rouge louisiana 70874 all right what's on this page ah here we go the Contemporary Story Cartoon, and Exploring the Story in Ruby's Lab. Welcome a new friend. The Contemporary Story for November 12th, 2023. Class, this is Evie's. He's a new student. His family is from Colombia where they speak Spanish. Let's give Evie's the warm welcome. Hello, Evie's. Welcome, Evie's. Evie's waved and sat in the back of the classroom. He didn't say much in class. At lunch. Or during recess time. What's his problem? 
Why doesn't he say anything when people speak to him? Maybe he doesn't understand what we're saying. They speak Spanish where he's from. I don't speak Spanish. The other kids in class ignored Evie's, but Marcus didn't think that was right. Marcus went home that night and asked his parents for help learning Spanish. Why would you want to do that? So I can talk to the new kid in my class. No one else will talk to him. He must be lonely. That's kind of you. I'll help you. Maybe we can invite your new friend and his family over for dinner, too. What did Evie's do when he was introduced to the students in the class? Saludó con la mano y se sentó en la parte posterior de la clase. A wave down sat in the back of the class. Why did Marcus want to learn Spanish? Because Evie's did not speak much during school, and I wanted to be able to talk to him. One of the ultimate acts of love is to be accepting of someone different from us. When we reach out and welcome someone who does not look or speak as we do, we show that person the love of God. Exploring the story in Ruby's Lab. Hello everyone, Ruby here. Did you know that it's easier to love someone than to hate someone? It takes more energy to maintain hatred towards someone than it does to love him or her. Let's do an experiment during the week. I'm asking you to be more loving and forgiving to everyone next week. It doesn't matter what they do to you, you must show them love. Write down how you felt and how hard you had to work to be loving towards them. We'll share our answers together next week in class. Or you can write to me at P.O. Box 74514, Baton, Louisiana 70874. Or contact me by my favorite name communication ruby red panda at mail.com and that's ruby red panda at mail.com and say to ruby red panda at mail.com ruby red panda I said ruby red panda ruby red panda at mail.com this is the end Lesson review. Let's see. Our key verse, our lesson came from the first Corinthians, uh, the first letter to the Corinthians from Paul, verse, nope, not verse, chapter 13, verses 4 through 7 and 12 and 13. The key verse is love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. So, in this scripture, Paul is not critiquing or criticizing people's spiritual gifts or the way they use their spiritual gifts. Instead, he's saying that they're of no value. They have no value without love. If you don't have love, they're worth nothing. He insists that love for others is the context in which these gifts should be practices. So, you should love others and use those gifts toward others, right? Because remember what we said, in service to others is serving God. So if you use your gifts in serving others and serving God, oh man, what a wonderful place it would be. But you shouldn't perform it for, or use your gifts for self-promotion purposes. So if I have the gift of teaching, and that's one of the reasons why I do not get paid for making these videos. I do it as a ministry. I love 
for ministering to children. That's right. My YouTube channel is not monetized. That means I don't get any money for it, from it. And I do not promote myself. Paul's description of love begins with two positive statements. And he says, love is. Love is. He says, love is followed by seven negative statements saying love is not or does not. And then he finishes with a list of four verbs describing what love does. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You can see that in verse seven. God's patience, his patience, and his loving kindness serve as the model for how Christians are supposed to be. How we're supposed to love each other, use our gifts in serving God without being self-promoting. Just because, not because we want to be famous, but because we want to be good citizens of the world and want to, we want to show God how much we love him by using the gifts he gave us to glorify him. All right, boys and girls, it's the end of the lesson, giving the gift of love, but it is not the end because you still should give the gift of love, giving love to others, using your gifts to glorify God by serving others. Oh, man, and giving to and forgiving others too wow sometimes that's not an easy thing to do but remember before you leave look down at the bottom if you're on youtube and remember to click like and subscribe to this channel click the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and remember that we love you God loves you too, and there's nothing you can do about it. So long, till next time.